let's look at the steps in SAP. How do you do this? Step number one is the customer places an order, right? So it is this step. Customer places an order and it's a regular order, right? Nothing out of the blue. It's standard order, OR, standard customer. Everything is the same. But come at the line item level, you'll see that there's a different item category here. TAS. TAN is our standard item category, right? The one that triggers a delivery, billing, so on. But TAS is different. This is what ensures that step number two here happens. Instead of delivering the goods from our warehouse directly to the customer. Right? So this is not what happens. Instead, this is what happens. And the item category is what makes it happen. So this is the trigger point. This is the trigger for third party dropship. This is the trigger to create a PO to the vendor. Now you could configure it to happen automatically based off of your standard item category determination. Meaning for some goods, it's always a dropship. Like the Philips accessories examples that we discussed. Sometimes it's on demand, meaning if we don't have stock and if we need to send the goods right away to the customer, let's say, then change the item category dynamically. Either way, it has the same effect. It triggers a third party dropship and we're going to see how. So step number one is everything else remaining the same. The customer order comes in and the item category triggers a change in the process. And the reason why is at the item category level is something you should understand by now, right? It's at the item category level because you could have some items being drop shipped and some items being delivered from your warehouse. So it's not a header level process, it's an item level process. So that's the reason why it's done at the item category level. And if you go to the schedule line, you'll see that the corresponding schedule and category for TAS is CS. So TAS, the item category that you have changed or configured, triggers the schedule and category of CS. You could have your own Z item categories based off of TAS or CS. But these are the standard item categories provided by SAP. So you should know them. And what does CS do? There's some magic that's happening here at the item category level. We'll talk about it in the config. But the bulk of the magic actually happens at the schedule and category level. Again, we'll see what that magic is when we come to the config. But over here, these are the key trigger points. Item category, schedule and. And when CS is being configured as the schedule and category, as soon as the order is saved, right, it automatically triggers a purchase requisition, PREC. Purchase requisition. Now, for those of you who are just in SD, you don't have any idea about MM, a purchase requisition is a precursor to a purchase order. For example, what's a precursor to an order? Now, there are many examples or many precursors actually, like a contract or a scheduling agreement. Maybe not a scheduling agreement, but contract is a good one, right? So a contract or a quotation, right? So these are precursor documents to orders. Similarly, purchase requisitions are internal documents within the company that are generated based off of which they're either combined or they're split up or the purchaser, purchasing officer makes a decision and converts them into a purchase order. And the purchase order is the actual vendor facing document. Purchase requisition is an internal document. It's meant for making decisions. It's a precursor. The purchasing officer can make a decision and approve it and then convert it into a purchase order whereby it goes out to the vendor. Right? And when you do that trigger, step number two is, or rather, they're still in step number one. And what is this transaction? This is the purchase requisition. 
The transaction code for that is M E fifty three N or fifty one fifty two for create and change. But we are not creating the purchase requisition from scratch. It's triggered as part of the schedule in category. So you don't have to manually create it. SAP will create the purchase requisition for you. All you have to do is go to 52N or 53N, put the purchase requisition in, and you'll see the actual purchase requisition. Now, some more stuff for the SD consultant. What is this? Account assignment category. What is this GL account business area? What's this whole screen? Well, like I said, this is a precursor document in MM. And the account assignment category is third party. This is the equivalent of an item category in, in a sales order. So this is the item category. This is called as account assignment. The account assignment controls the GL accounts that are here. The item category controls the logistics. So because this purchase requisition, basically what this says is, because this purchase requisition is generated specifically to cater to the needs of a particular sales order, the account assignment or the accounting that has to happen behind the scenes is totally different from a purchase requisition that is specifically created, let's say, to fulfill your stock requirements. Meaning, if Philips wanted to stock their warehouse with accessories, it will not create a third party order. Right? It will create a standard purchase requisition, get the goods, put it in their warehouse. But this is not that kind of scenario, right? This is called a dropship. A scenario where we're going to send this purchase order in a couple of minutes to the vendor after we convert this purchase requisition to a purchase order. And the goods are going to go straight to the customer, right? Straight to the customer. And because of that, the way the accounting happens, is just that the sales order is going to eat the cost of procurement. And that's exactly what this account assignment category will do for us. It ensures that the cost of the goods that is being procured is somehow associated with the sales order. Now, how it does that behind the scenes is something that the MM consultant is worried about not the SD consultant. So for you as an SD consultant, you don't have to worry about that, right? Just understand that this is a third party transaction. Even if you're not fully aware of this account assignment category, it doesn't cause you any harm as an SD consultant. But as an MM consultant, if you're trying to understand this, then you probably know by now that this purchase requisition is based off of a third party account assignment category and hence the accounting happens differently. All right, so, all right, so that, that was step number one. So step number one is where the customer has placed an order. And instead of doing the standard fulfill from the stock or place an order with the vendor, get it, the stock into our warehouse and then deliver it to a customer ourselves, we're taking a shortcut. We're asking the vendor directly to supply it to the customer, right? So the first step is we take the order and trigger the necessary purchase requisition so that Step number two, which is sending the purchase order over to the customer, can now happen. Right? So, the first key to trigger this is the item category, TAS. Because of TAS item category, the schedule line CS. And because of schedule line CS, as soon as you save it, right? As soon as you save it, it triggers a purchase requisition. And this is automatic. You don't have to do anything. This is automatic. And what is a purchase requisition? It's a precursor document to a purchase order. So purchase order is the vendor facing document. So this purchase order is the vendor facing document, but purchase requisition is somewhere in between here. So this is where the purchase requisition is, right? The sales order triggers a purchase requisition and we are right at this point. Step number two is not done yet, right? All right. So let's go to step number two. All right. And then we have seen how a purchase requisition looks like. ME53N, open the purchase requisition. And then you'll see that there's this item that you have entered in the sales order. There's the quantity. 
and this is the sales order that you have created with the corresponding item category and the account assignment of third party meaning the cost of procurement is being eaten by your sales order right so that was step number one let's go to step number two step number two is we take that purchase requisition and convert that into purchase order so this is the purchase order me 21 n is the transaction so the previous transaction was me 53 n we just viewed the purchase requisition we didn't create it but over here we are converting that purchase requisition into a purchase order so this is the conversion process convert purchase requisition to p o oh, purchase order this is like the actual order that goes out to the vendor saying deliver this and that now, who should this be delivered the customer right so this address here is the actual customer's address right and this gets passed down this address from the sales order so this is where we have taken the customer's address right and this address gets passed over via the purchase requisition to the purchase order step number two automatically so this gets passed over automatically you don't have to do anything that's how that the schedule and category behaves all right and if you look at the document flow after your purchase order has been created you'll see that the sales order has a purchase order in the document flow this is something that you don't see normally in your otc this only happens if you're doing a third party dropship right so this is a peculiar or special document flow where you have your sales order associated with it you have a purchase order and you only see it after the conversion after PREC is converted to PO that is step number two and if you try to do goods receipt it says the goods receipt is not possible now there are some adjustments that can be done for that in order to do a dummy goods receipt there are scenarios why you would want to do that but that's a very special case you don't have to worry about that now for a standard scenario goods receipt is not possible for a standard scenario of a third party dropship goods receipt is not possible in case you're wondering why let me tell you why the reason why that's not possible is because you did not intend to create this purchase order to deliver the goods to the plant right that was not your intention your intention is for the vendor to deliver it directly to the customer and because of that you can't do a goods receipt that's not possible goods receipt not possible and that's what he's trying to say here no goods receipt possible for this purchase order which is of type third party right so this is not a special step that you have to do but i'm just trying to show you that for a third party item category purchase order that's sent to the vendor you can do a goods receipt in my go so my go goods receipt not possible the reason is simple the goods receipt doesn't happen in our purview right so what happens is the delivery is drop shipped it's not sent over to our stock so no my role or my go right so because the delivery is not happening in our purview there's no need to do a goods receipt step number four is my role what's my role my role is invoice receipt so if you look at the steps one two three are done three is something that didn't happen in our purview so we're not too bothered about it Step number four is where the invoice is being sent by the vendor to us, the company. And that we have to receive based on the purchase order. So for this purchase order, for a quantity of one, we pay the vendor so much, right? 594 euros. And this is done using Miro. This is the standard transaction to take in the vendor invoice. And of course, finance department will pay it 
based on the accounting document that's created. And if you look at the purchase order history after you have received the invoice, you should be able to see in the purchase order history that an invoice has been received, right? And the invoice is for so and so dollars or euros. So the purchase order history should update the invoice that you receive from the vendor. Now the next step, step number five, is where you send an invoice to your customer. It's this step. Step number five, sending the invoice to the customer. You do this because your promise to the customer has been fulfilled. You have delivered the goods. Now you need to send out an invoice to the customer so that the customer can pay. And that is happening without a delivery, right? You see, there's no delivery. So it's an order-based invoice. Order-based invoice. Of course, I'm calling it an order-based invoice, but with a twist, which we're going to see when we come to the configuration. All right. So in the next chapter, we look at the config. So in the next chapter, I'm going to demo it in the system for you. So we're going to create a standard sales order, convert that into purchase requisition, convert the purchase requisition into a purchase order, get the invoice and invoice the customer, right? All the five steps that we've seen, we're going to do it.